Think you're pretty smart, don't you, sister, squealing on me last That's night? That's a lie. I didn't squeal on you. Oh, you didn't, eh? No, I didn't. Anyone says I did is lying. Come on, you two. Yeah. Cut it out. Shut up, Doc. You keep out of this. Are you calling me a liar? That's what I said, and it's a shoe fix word, you frowsy little blonde. Why, I... Nellie, cut it oh, out. You know what'll happen. Why, you... You can't call me a frowsy blonde. Oh, damn it! Take care of that guy. Come on. Well, honey, look at these. Gee, we didn't figure on that. We can't take her. But you got to, Nick. You got to. Hey, no fireworks. You want the rest of the guards on our necks? Oh, gee, let me just give them one little blast, huh? You heard me. Let's go. Looks like you're coming with us, Doc. I can't. I don't want to. Don't be a sad. But I've only got one more month and I'm free. Why, wait Come another on, month. Sister. Come I, on, let's no, go. No, no, I can't. No. No, I can't. We made it, honey. We made it. Gee, it's great to see you again. <laughs> Yeah, I missed you too, baby. Seems a long time, don't it? Oh, it sure does. Oh, pardon me. Honey, this is Doc. Doc? Yep, she's a regular doctor. Rosemary Walsh. M-D-B-A-D-S. <laughs> C-O-D and A-W-O-L. Doc, this is my big heartbeat. Nick Morelli. Kind of cute, ain't he? Hello. Hello. About that booty O'Shea. A little dumb, but okay. Hello. How you, babe? What's the matter, Doc? You look like you was going back into that dump instead of getting away from it. Aren't you glad you're out? I don't quite know. Well, how do you like that? And hurry in on a phony rap, too. All right, kids, all out. Change to the New York Express, waiting on track six. Watch you some clothes, baby. Hope they fit. Boy, you think of everything, don't you? Boy, was my face red. <laughs> When that sales dame says, what size this or what size that, what size this? <laughs> Boy, was we guessing. I didn't figure on three of you, but I got plenty, so I think there's enough to go around. Where are they? In the car. Say, how's about getting this jewelry off, Nick? I'd hate to have to pull Doc through the sleeve of a sweater. Okay, slip me a hairpin. Oh. Um, uh, Baldy, take the car and get some sandwiches and coffee. Make mine chicken on whole wheat toast and a big slab of mince pie. Make it two and get real cream to the coffee. I'd like to see if my system can stand the shock. Or the best hotel in town. You don't stand so much chance of getting picked up. Okay. Oh, gee. Won't it be great to feel silk next to your skin again? Oh, I can hardly wait. Ouch. All right, Nicky. Don't have to make a government project out of it. I got a hunch somebody's going to be needing a doctor around here. And I don't mean Nicky. Are you sure you'd want to stick with us until we hit New York? Yeah, thanks just the same. But I think it's better if we split up. Okay, have it your way, but you're welcome. I know that. You've been swell. So long, Nellie. Good luck, kid. You sure put up a swell fight. <laughs> Bye, Doc. Goodbye. So long, Baldy. Bye. Bye. You'll find a bus station right on the edge of town. Here, kid. You'll need a little for it takes. Thanks. Well, I'll be seeing you all in the funny papers. Okay. 
Okay, Baldy, step on it. Wait a minute. I think you'd better go on without me, too. Now, that's an idea. Well, why, Doc? Where are you hidden? I think I'll go back and give myself up. Give yourself up? Yes. You mean you want to go back to that hole? Back to eating that sour belly and mush? Mush and sour belly and beans? Are you crazy? Don't forget if that guard is dead, you're walking right into a murder rap. And I didn't give no love to him either, sister. I can't help it. I don't want to go through the rest of my life hunted a fugitive. I'm always afraid to look over my shoulder. Hey, you ain't figuring on double crossing us and shooting off your mouth, are you? Well, I promise I won't do anything to jeopardize you, any of you, in any way. Now look, Doc. You're being awful foolish. You're a nice girl and I like you. I could make things easy for you in New York. Let her go. We don't need any excess baggage. She's only in on a pass anyway. You'll frame this to get me and Jane out. I think Nellie's right, Nick. Okay, baby. You asked for it. Well, I've sprung a lot of people out of jail, but this is the first time I ever paid anybody's fare back in. I don't need any money. Look, you've got a hundred miles to go, and I don't see any magic carpet laying around here, Louis. Yeah. Well, I'll pay it back to you sometime. Forget it. If you change your mind, you can find me in town. There's a little cigar store on the corner of Front Street and Second Avenue called the Elite. They always know where to get me. Thanks, Nick. You've been awfully kind. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doc. I hope I see you again soon. Come on, Nick. We're wasting time. Well, uh, so long, Doc. Goodbye, Nellie. Goodbye, Baldy. So long. Give my love to Grizzle, Puss.
Oh, I thought you was Doc Terry. What you want? Can I have a drink of water, please? Guess so. Well's round and back. Give me a drink. Give me a drink, will you? Oh, this pain's killing me. Ain't you? Yeah. Thought so. Is someone sick inside? Not exactly sick. Paul hurt his leg. Broke, I reckon, from the way he's been carrying on. When did it happen? Oh, last night. Did you call for a doctor? Yes, but Doc Carey's pretty busy, I reckon. If it was fractured last night, something ought to be done and quickly. Infection has set in. Can't help it. Just gotta wait for Doc Carey, I reckon. Well, Maybe I can help. I know something about broken bones. Don't think Paul let you touch it. Nonsense. Come on. Where is he? In there. I'm a doctor. I'd like to take care of that for you. Now, you get out of here. Never did want no truck with a woman doctor. Go on, get out. Give me a drink, Ma. No, you had nothing. Ain't gonna get no more. You give me a drink, I... Oh, if I could get out of here, I'd bust you one. Here, drink this down. What you do that for? It'll ease his pain. Hey, Ma, I, I told you that's what I need. He's crazy, that old woman of mine. And she never did have a lick of sense. Here, drink this. Hey, you... Hey, you all right. I apologize to you, I just... Mm. Uh. Mmm, that's... That's sure good. Uh. You'll sleep now. More than likely pass out. So much the better. Get me some hot water and some clean cloths, towels, if you have any. Have you got any bandages? No. Well, then tear up a sheet. Tear up a sheet? Yes, in strips about so wide. Go out and get me a couple of pieces of wood about so long, about three or four inches wide. Flat, the kind they make boxes out of. Go get it yourself. Luke, you do what the lady says or I'll bet you one. Oh, I'm eating. Thanks. Get the hot water. There. That'll do till the doctor comes. Hey. You're all right, you know. Thanks. Mmm, that stew smells good. If I fix your plate, would you eat it? 
Would I? Just try me. Good. It ain't nothing fancy, but he's filling. I was raised on it, Mrs. Walker. You see, my father was a New York cop. It was his favorite dish. Next to corned beef and cabbage. You don't say. Yeah. I still remember telling my brother when we were kids. Danny, me boy, he'd say, eat up your stew. It'll put hair on your chest. Come on, telling you, for a while he had me scared to touch it. Then he shifted to, it'll make your hair curly. <laughs> for my benefit. Have more coffee? Thanks. It's a good thing you come by. Our pot be raving yet. And no telling when Doc Carey will get here. Don't worry, he'll be along soon. I reckon he's got a right to take his time. Because he won't charge nothing for fixing Pa up. He don't never charge us folks in the holler for nothing. I'll bet he'll be here as soon as if he was getting a big fee. Maybe. Sounds like it might be him coming now. Hello, Mrs. Walker. Sorry I couldn't get here any sooner. Nathaniel Washington's wife had twins. The cutest little pickaninnies you ever saw. The second one was a little late. How's Ben? Well, all right, I reckon. Oh, how do you do? I'm Dr. Carity. Yes, I know. Well, let's have a look at Ben. Well, I'm glad you gave him plenty to drink. She done it. So? Well, it eases pain. Now, let's see. She done that, too. That's a beautiful job of bone setting and splinting. As good as I could have done. Who is she? Don't know. Ain't asked. She just dropped in. I see. Well, give him all he wants to eat and drink. I'll drop by tomorrow. Now I want to meet that young lady and compliment. In a hurry, I'll be glad to drive you. I owe you a favor anyway. That was a grand job back there. It was nothing. It was a great deal. Now just close your eyes and relax. Where are you taking me? To my home. I have a plantation. Not much of a one, but still a plantation on the other side of the swamp. My name is Stephen Carey. Mine is... Yes, I know. You're Rosemary Waltz. Dr. Rosemary Waltz. I recognized you from your pictures in the paper this morning. If there'd been any doubt in my mind, the job on old Ben's leg would have convinced me. Just put two and two together. Then why are you taking me with you? Where else would you go? I don't know. Well, that's that. Why did you run away from prison? I didn't really run away. I got mixed up in a jailbreak. I didn't want to go, but I was handcuffed to one of the girls, and when a couple of her friends took her away, well, I had to go along. You had nothing to do with attacking the guard, then? No. That was a total surprise to me. And then? 
And I decided to go back and give myself up. I got almost as far as Emeryville. But I knew I'd never believe my story. So, all well, the natural things seemed to be to turn around and keep going, that's all. I see. Now, don't you think you'd better let me out here? No, I don't. Why are you doing this? Because you ought to have time to think. Would it do any good to tell you I wasn't guilty? I wanted to hear you say that. Poor old soul didn't have a chance to get well. Even the head doctor said so. She wanted to die. Begged me, interns, even the nurses to end her suffering. I've seen cases like that. Then one day she got an overdose. I was blamed. Dr. Granger did everything he could to help me at the trial, but the jury didn't believe either of us. I believe you. As for the overdose, I don't think anyone should have the right lawfully to take a life under those circumstances. Doctors are supposed to cure, not kill. I don't think any human should have the right to say that a person is incurable and should die. That should be left to a far wiser mind. That's how I feel about it. That's why I'm not guilty. What name were you going to use in case anyone asked? Anne. Anne Roberts. This is Admiral Nelson of Leverick. I call him Skipper for short. Hello, Skipper. <laughs> He's got a pedigree as long as your arm, but he's the best hunting dog in the state. My beautiful. <laughs> Genesis, we have company. Yes, sir, Mr. D. We sure most certainly have. This is Miss Ann Roberts. She's going to stay here a while. Yes, how you do, ma'am? Now, you might tell Sarah it'll be just as well if she doesn't talk too much about Miss Roberts being here. Do you understand? I comprehend, Mrs. Steve. I so most certainly do. Yes, sir. All right. Which is exactly what he sure most certainly does not. <laughs> just make yourself at home. If there's anything you want, Sarah will get it for you. Well, this is my sister's room when she's here. Oh. The closets are full of clothes, and the drawers are full of things and stuff. <laughs> Just help yourself. Oh, I don't like to. Oh, forget it. It'll be all right with sis. Now, as your physician, I prescribe a nice warm bath and a nap and a walk before dinner. I'll see you later in time for the walk. Make yourself at home. <laughs> Thanks. Anything you want, honey? A good long sleep. Well, Ann, you haven't said a word for the last half hour. I've been thinking. Supposing it were found out that you were hiding me. It won't be. But supposing it were, wouldn't you be liable for arrest? Who could prove that I knew you were Rosemary Walsh? Who could prove anything, for that matter, except that you're a qualified medical assistant aiding me in my lab work? But the field hands might talk. No one pays any attention to what I do. We'll ride together, we'll hunt, and we'll fish. And for all they'll know, you're just a visitor, and visitors don't attract suspicion, so please forget it. You make it sound plausible and almost right. <laughs> How'd you look, Doc? Well, it looked as though you'll be up drinking in a week, man. <laughs> Give 
This is my sister, Linda. Uh, Linda, this is Ann Roberts, my assistant. I'm very pleased to meet you. How do you do? She looks pretty cute in your clothes, don't you think? Yes. That dress fits her better than it does me. <laughs> I want to thank you for these. I hope I'm not imposing. Not at all. Anything to please the big brother. <laughs> I'd like to talk to Steve. Would you mind? Not a bit. Shall I run those tests, Steve? Oh, yes. Run Mrs. Mooney's first. I'm a little worried about her. Okay. Sit down, Stevie. What's on your mind, sis? Is there something you'd like to tell little sister Steve? Hmm? Oh, you mean Anne? Mm-hmm. What goes on, Steve? <laughs> Nothing. She's helping me in the lab and with some of my cases. She's a regular MD, you know. Do you think you're doing the wise thing? What do you mean, the wise thing? Now, Steve, don't get excited. After all, you're the only big brother I have, and I'm only trying to warn you. You don't understand, sis. And neither do you. Would it surprise you to know that it's all over town that you have a girl, a stranger, staying here? Well, what about it? Now, Steve, you know the people in this part of the world. Scandal's pretty scarce to them, and when one comes along, they make the most of it. You know what that means. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yes. You know it? And I think I know it. But well, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Oh, so that's the way it is, eh? That's the way it is. She's the finest girl I ever met. She's had a pretty tough break, and, well, she's just beginning to live. As a matter of fact, so am I. Well, in that case, I guess little Linda will trot along back to town. Let you settle it in your own little way. Aren't you staying for supper? No, thanks. I have a much more interesting date in town. And he only has a 48-hour leave. Oh. Uh, goodbye, sis. Oh, say goodbye to Dr. Roberts for me, will you, Steve? I'll be glad to. He runs out of stockings. Tell her there are some hidden in the bottom drawer, way in the back. All right, sis. I hate to admit it, Steve. But I admire your taste. Goodbye, sis. Linda told me to say goodbye. Oh, did she go? Yes. Bad news? Oh, it's nothing. People are talking, that's all. About me? About us. Do they suspect? Not that you're Rosemary Walsh. It's just old-fashioned gossip about Ann Roberts, a pretty girl living on a plantation with a single man. They're asking some questions. They might get some answers I don't want them to get. soon lose interest in Dr. and Mrs. Carey. Proper things are never exciting. I might have expected this from you. Expected what? 
The perfect gesture? Oh, now, wait a minute, Anne. I'm no, making... No, let me finish, please. I could say it was wonderful. <laughs> that would sound awfully trite. I don't mean it that way. I mean it's perfect. It makes me love you twice as much. But I'm afraid it can't be done. That doesn't make sense. Oh, yes, it does. I can't let you tie yourself to a girl who was Rosemary Walsh. Don't you understand, Steve? I understand, but I don't agree. But Steve, dear... Anne, it all adds up to one simple little thing. I love you. Oh, I know what you're thinking, but it wouldn't do you any good to run away. No matter where you go, I'd follow you and I'd find you. I can see the license clerk's face when he says, Name, please. And I say, Rosemary Walsh. But you wouldn't say Rosemary Walsh. If I said Ann Roberts, it wouldn't be legal. Oh, it wouldn't. Be. I knew you'd come to that, and I'm ready for you. Marriage is a contract between two persons, not two names. We agree to marry each other. And right names are wrong. The contract is legal and binding in heaven and on earth. Smart, aren't you? Oh, oh, but I was smart enough to look that up in my law book. <laughs> I just want to hear one thing. Well, Steve, I shouldn't. But I can't help it. That's you, Doc? Yes, Pete. What's keeping you up this late? I'm looking for someone, that's why. It's all right, dear, don't worry. Taking that deputy badge of yours pretty seriously, aren't you, Pete? Working at 24 hours a day? Yep. The law's the law, Doc. 24 hours a day. Well, all right, out with it. What do you want? What are you doing on my property? Seen anything of old Dave Slocum? Dave Slocum? Oh, what's he done? Stole a side of bacon. Can you imagine that? That's terrible. Poor fellow must have been hungry. Well, I'm paid for running down criminals. And I'm hunting him down whether you like it or not. Come on, boys. That's a worry we both wasted there. Step right this way, ladies and gentlemen. Marriage licenses, tumbled order a la carte. Step lively, please. This is a very busy office. Well, Steve. Marty, oh boy, I want one of your best marriage licenses. One that will last a lifetime. Well, what do you know about that? Well, you, you've escaped it a long time, but uh, from the looks of things, why, uh, you ain't lost much by winking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Carrie. Stephen. Hess. Born June. What was that date again, Steve? 22nd. Yes, yeah, 22nd. My memory ain't what it used to be. <laughs> June 22nd, 1970. Right. That's right. Now, miss, what's your name, please? Rosemary Walsh. Rosemary. What did you say? Rosemary Walsh. Now, wait a minute, Marty. I want you to Please, understand. Please, don't. Oh, Pete. Come here a minute, will you? Darling, why did you do that? Why? Because I love you. Hello, Steve. Fixing to get married? Yes, to Rosemary Walsh. Huh? Well, sure enough. Funny I didn't recognize you last night. Rosemary Walsh, I arrest you. Take your belt. Are you going to tell anyone else about this? Oh, no, no, well, I... See I... that you don't. Come on, dear. Well, they never...
Sarah McGuire find you here, honey? Sarah, do you know what you're doing? Or why I have to hide? No, Miss Ann, I don't. Mr. Steve just told me to bring you here in a hurry. Old Sarah don't never ask no questions. I escaped from jail. Well, I'm... that's good, honey. I'm glad. You don't belong in no jailhouse no how. But I don't want to hurt Mr. Steve. I'm going up to the house and wait for the police. Oh, no, you ain't, honey. Not if I has to sit on you, ain't. You gonna stay here and do just what Mr. Steve said, that's what. Now, you just go on in there and sit down and unlax yourself. Mr. Steve will fix everything. Sheriff, I've been expecting you. Sit down. Thanks. <clears throat> now, I ain't going to ask you where she is, Steve, because I've known you too long and I like you too much to make you lie to me. Thanks, Jim. Of course, I can't answer for what Pete Saunders will do. You hit him pretty hard, Steve, and Pete ain't the kind that forgets very easily. Besides, he's kind of hankering to be elected to my job next election, and if he was to bring in this gal, it'd maybe get him a lot of votes. Yeah. Jim, I'm going to impose on your friendship and ask you something. Of course, you don't have to answer if you don't Go want right to. Go ahead, son. What should I do? Do you love her, Steve? Yeah. Then I can't advise you, my boy. What could happen? Well... By rights, I could demand that you surrender the gal and throw you in jail for harboring a fugitive. I'll never let you take it. That's just the reason why I ain't going to do it yet. But you will. Eventually, I'll have to. But, Steve, it ain't going to be easy for me to put old Pop Carey's boy in jail. You've got your job to do, Jim. Yeah, like Pete said, law is the law. Well, I guess I'd better be getting back to town. You want me to go with you? No, leastwise, not now. I reckon you'll be around, though, if I want you. Yeah, I may want to run down to the Capitol. Good idea. Maybe I'll go with you. Oh, Jim. Yeah. Suppose Miss Walsh disappeared, left the state. Well... This badge ain't much good past the state line. Another is Pete's. So long, Steve. So long, Jim. Mr. Steve! Mr. Steve! Yeah? Miss Ann done gone. Gone? Yes, and Big Roger didn't go out of the stall, too. Why did she do such a thing? I never thought I'd live to see the day that I'd sign a warrant for Steve Carey. He's committed a crime, ain't he? There's your warrant, Pete. What about the other one? For assault and battery against me. Are you sure you're not using the law for personal vengeance? He hit an officer of the law, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's again the law. You gonna sign it? If I know Steve Gary, you're going to earn your money serving him. Judge, it'll be a pleasure.
Now, honey, don't you go carrying on like this. Yeah, but Mrs. Steve told me to take care of it. It's all my fault. <laughs> well, do, don't you worry. Mrs. Steve will find her. Darling, Mrs. Steve, now. Mr. Steve, Big Roger doesn't come back all by himself. Steve Carey, you're under arrest for harboring a felon Aiden and the bet and a fugitive and assault and battery. Your Honor, in view of the seriousness of this case, I demand that the defendant's bail be set at ten thousand dollars. That's a bit high, don't you think? No, I don't, Your Honor. Not considering the graveness of the charges against him. Mm -hmm. You got that much, Steve? No, Judge, nowhere near that much. Judge, Your Honor, may I suggest that Steve be released into my custody on his own uh, re, uh, recognized... Recognizance? Yeah, that's it, Judge. Thank you. Your Honor, I object. Objection one. overruled. He's in your custody, Jim. Thank you. And I'll set the trial for him. Let me see. Uh, uh, 27. Yeah, that's right. Twenty-seventh. Uh, that's two weeks from tomorrow. Watch adjourn. What do you know? Look who's here. Doc. Come on in. Hello, Nick. Hello, baby. Gee, I'm glad to see you. I've been watching the papers. I knew you were still on the loose. Yeah, me and Nick was only talking about you yesterday, wasn't we, Nick? Yeah. That's so. Hello, Nellie. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. That's good. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Sit down, Doc. You know, I never should have let you go back that night. That was a dumb trick if there ever was one. Where do you go from here, Doc? Well, I don't know. Big said it's Sure, right. you did the right thing, baby. Now all your troubles are over. I uh, said I could make things easy for you, and believe me, I can. She ain't going no place from here. Okay. Just so she knew what the score is. The prison people are yelling their heads off for your scalp. They're the worst of all. Jim, I, I really don't care about myself. But it seems so unfair to Anne, so, so hopeless. You believe me, don't you, when I tell you that I don't know where she is and I wish to heaven I did? Yes, son, I believe you. Steve, I hate to tell you this, but I was talking to the governor yesterday and he said there wasn't anything that he could do for you or the girl either. Politicians are just raising the devil. He did say, though, that if the girl were captured and brought back before your trial, it might go better for you. An eye for an eye, huh? That's what it looks like. Well, I hope they never find her.
Hello, honey. Nick, we hadn't better let Doc get a hold of the newspaper. Why? Well, uh... Read that. What? Right there. What? If she ever saw that, she'd go right out and give herself up to the first cop she could find. Probably shoot off her mouth and drag us all into it. Ah, she wouldn't have the nerve. No, you don't know Doc. That's just the kind of nerve she has got. Why should she do that? Because she loves him, that's why. Look, it says right there, they were going to get married. And if she went back to jail, especially if she'd give herself up, it'd make it easier on him. She knows that. She's plenty smart. Ah, uh, she wouldn't pull a trick like that. Well, I wouldn't take a chance. Even though I'd be glad to get rid of her. Why? Well, we won't go into that. You know what I mean. Look, Miss, I've got a hunch that we'd better take her along today. After that, we can turn her loose and she wouldn't dare show her face to a cop. You ain't so dumb yourself, baby. And then what happened, Mr. Saunders? You mean after I recognized her in the license clerk's office? Yes. Uh, what did you do? I grabbed her by the wrist and told her she was under arrest. And then? Then it happened. What happened? He knocked me colder than a cucumber. <laughs> I don't imagine Pete can see anything funny in that. Now, Mr. Saunders, when you came to, do you remember? Don't be long, boys. Okay. Sit tight and keep your mouth shut. Steve Carey is a doctor and a good one, too, with a string of letters after his name. He does more good for folks than any man around here. And for nothing, too. Got different ideas from a lot of us plain folks. He figured that the girl hadn't done anything wrong and didn't deserve to be put in jail in the first place. Why, you can't Your blame Honor, a man I for that. I submit that this court is not interested in Steve Carey's opinion of the justice of the original sentence. But in his actions in aiding and abetting and harboring the fugitive. Objection sustained. Sheriff, Steve Carey gave you his word not to leave town, didn't he? Yes, he's placed in my custody and I didn't worry a bit about it. Excuse me, lady. Come on, Baldy. Oh, they got me! Come on, now get going. Dad, pick him up, you yellow belly! me so bum-foozled, I don't know what you're talking about no more. Your Honor, this witness is willfully withholding information. Your Honor, I object to the district attorney's insinuation and to the way he is misleading the witness. Make your questions more direct, Mr. Miller. Proceed. Isn't it a fact that Dr. Carey instructed you to hide Rosemary Walsh? I don't know no Rosemary Walsh. Did you know Ann Roberts? Oh, yes, sir. I certainly did. Well, Ann Roberts is Rosemary Walsh. Mr. Judge, Your Honor, I ask you, can you figure out what he's saying? How can Ann Roberts be Rosemary Walsh when she's Ann Roberts? <laughs> <laughs> this young gentleman is just as mixed up as I is. <laughs> I can't make him out no huh? <laughs> Proceed, Mr. Miller. Now, if that's all. <laughs> Put him over here on the couch. Nick. Nick, honey. Come on, do 
something, Baldy. Hurry up. Do something. He's hurt. Bad. Oh, Mary Daddy. Please talk to me. Look at Nellie. Come on, Nicky baby. Well, Doc, you'll have to get into a hospital right away. Oh, talk sense, will you? How can I take him to a hospital? It's the first place the cops will look. He's hemorrhaging internally. Only a major operation can save him. You mean he's going to die? Yes, unless something is done quickly. Very quickly. Doc, this operation, could you do it? Could you? Yes, with a proper instrument. That's all I want to know. Come on, take care of him, Baldy. But where are we? Never mind. Come on. You'll be needing a doctor yourself. Come on, step on it. These the only sutures you've got? No, there's some more in the next drawer. Hand me that to stethoscope, will you, Doctor? Have you got everything you want? Yes. If you find a couple hundred dollar bills in the mail, keep your mouth shut and spend them. I'll try and get these back to you, Doctor. Hey, Doc, these knives and things is boiling. Let them boil. I hope you know what you're doing. They've been on minutes. Look, we got 11 grand in that holdup. You pull Nick through this and it's all yours. I don't want any of it. Put on that robe and those gloves. You've got to help me. Me? Oh, no, I couldn't. Put those things on. <sighs> Dr. Carey, you admit that you knew that Ann Roberts and Rosemary Walsh were one and the same person. Yes. And that you also knew that Rosemary Walsh had escaped from the state prison. Yes. That's all. Your witness. Now, Dr. K. It's three o'clock, folks. Hard journey until ten o'clock tomorrow morning. <coughs> You're great, Doc. What I said about the dough still goes. I don't want any of it. Yes. Wrap it up in newspapers and burn it. All right, Doc. Two days ago.
Nellie, I need fifty dollars. I. You're not going anywhere. But I did what you wanted. Nick's all right now. You sure? Yes, fairly sure. Well, you're not leaving here until there's no maybe about it. Understand? Take that coat off. Didn't do so good today, did we, son? I don't give a hoot how we did. Oh, that's no way to feel about it, Steve. That don't sound like a carrier to me. Why, your people had more fighting blood than that. That's the way I feel. I don't want to build up your hopes, Steve, but I've been working on something. Can't tell you what it is yet. But uh, it mightn't do any good, then again, maybe it might. Well, thanks, Jim. Thanks a lot. Don't thank me till it happens. Ah, this is the bunk. It couldn't happen. The guys that write this stuff must be a bunch of maroons. Who do they think they're kidding? Bush, Myra didn't know the answer to that one. But I had a hunch I could find out. I got Sergeant Ryan from headquarters, and then with him went around to the John Chinaman who does my shirts every week. What a phony, these guys. What mug gets shorts cleaned every week? <laughs> Ryan waited in the doorway while I went in. What's he waiting in the doorway? Yes, that's right. Yes, they're the ones that held up the bank today. You'll find the money, all but fifty dollars, in the top left-hand dresser drawer in the bedroom. Yeah. You'll need an ambulance for Nick. You're welcome, Sergeant. versus Steve Carey. It is now up to you to decide at the best of your ability as to whether or not the state has proven its case against the defendant, conclusive enough to satisfy you beyond all reasonable doubt. Remember, this court is not trying Rosemary Walsh. She was tried and convicted four years ago. What you are called upon to decide now is whether or not Steve Carey is guilty of harboring her and aiding in her escape. The jury will now retire. Quick, in the police. Hurry up. 
Are you all right? No. Verdict, Lynn? Yes, Your Honor. We have. Excuse me. Excuse me, Your Honor. There's been a terrible accident. Bus full of people turned over just outside of town. They just telephoned for a doctor. Where, Charlie? Why, it's just the other side of Slocum's place, down the hollow. Many of them are badly hurt. Sheriff, I guess you better be getting out there. You too, Pete. Gee, I reckon you'd be more used there than either of them. Thanks, Judge. Court recess. Let me have a look. I'm a doctor. This woman is badly hurt. And. And oh, when? Why did you? I couldn't. Jim, send someone back to town for more bandages and splints in a hurry. Oh, well, Pete. Yeah. Go to town and get some bandages and splints. Quick, take Ed's car. Hurry. All right. Come on, Ed. Thanks, Jim. All right, boys, let's get this lady out from here now. And I think she's got a broken leg. If ever I get in an accident, miss, I sure hope you happen alone. Here's your stuff. I got all of that. Rosemary Walls. I'm placing you under arrest as an escaped convict. Court's now in session. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, about that, would you care to deliberate a little longer? We done a heap of deliberating on our way back from that accident, Your Honor. I don't reckon we need any more. What's your verdict, Lynn? Well, Your Honor, it uh, certainly ain't guilty. Unfortunately, Miss Walsh, we cannot give you back the four years you served for someone else's crime. But we can all try to make it up to you. The governor's already done his part by granting you a full part. A little late, I will admit, but it does erase your name from the records. Where we know now, it never should have been. Those four years are behind you, little lady. They don't count anymore. It's the 44 years ahead of you that do. And most folks in this neck of the wood hope that you spend them right here. Thank you. Well, Skipper, looks like we're going to have two doctors in the family now. <laughs> <laughs> well, dear, now that the name of Walsh has been cleared up, I bet you wouldn't want to change it. <laughs>